Throughout modern history, the moon has been woven into legend and lore. Most have associated our moon with strange anomalies, psychic phenomenon, and many other tales from the dark side. This natural satellite is known to control the Earth's tides, cycles, and patterns. But as the Younger Dryas period came to an abrupt end, and the mighty oceans continued to rapidly grow, many alternative researchers have pointed to lunar clues that reshape our understanding of our perfectly sized and placed celestial partner. Could the brightest and largest object in our night sky play a much larger role in creating a balance on this new watery planet of this majestic solar system? One of the greatest mysteries in our world, in our solar system today, is a mystery that is so obvious that some people simply take it for granted, and that is the existence of our moon. Our moon is one of the most mysterious moons in the entire solar system for a number of reasons. When we begin to look at the mathematics of our relationship to the moon, what we find is a precision that exceeds anything that we would expect to see in nature. For example, the distance between the Earth and the moon is exactly 108 moons, 108 diameters between the Earth and the moon. This number comes up very frequently in the Hindu and the Buddhist traditions. 108 is the number of beads on the mandalas that are used in the prayer. And the number is used to honor our relationship to the cosmos and in the cosmology. This is what we're told in these traditions. Then you begin to look even further. The distance between the Earth and the sun is exactly 108 suns. Can this be a coincidence? Or is this something that nature would do on its own? There are a lot of interesting facts and mysteries surrounding the moon. It's a unique relationship. We've never observed anywhere else in the known universe, as far as we can tell, a relationship between a moon and a planet quite like what we have on planet Earth with our moon today. Of all of the planets in our solar system, our moon is the largest moon relative to the planet that orbits than any other planet in the solar system. Our moon is fully a quarter of the size of our planet. It's a very anomalous object. In fact, some of the quotes in the early days of lunar studies was saying it's easier to explain why the moon shouldn't exist than why it does exist, or all theories of the lunar origin don't make sense. And so we're, we're still confronted with that. We're still, I think, struggling with this idea of how the moon came to be what it is. According to mainstream science, there are three prevailing theories on the origin of the moon. The first proposes that the moon and Earth were created around the same time when the solar system was forming roughly 4 to 4.5 billion years ago. The second theory is that the moon was created somewhere else and migrated into our solar system and was captured by the gravitational forces of the Earth. The third and most controversial theory is that there was a collision between Earth and a protoplanet named Thea. The debris from this collision eventually formed into the moon as we know it. Since the late 1960s, alternative researchers and skeptics of the mainstream theories remain focused on an Apollo 12 misfortune that sparked a string of new theories about the origin, structure, and purpose of this strangely perfect sphere. Apollo 12 astronauts, when they were leaving the moon, jettisoned their lunar lander, causing it to impact on the surface. It caused the moon to resonate and ring like a bell for over an hour. This shocked NASA scientists, and they tried to replicate that situation during Apollo 13. And so they sent an intentional impact down to the surface, causing it to resonate for over three hours. So to put this in a little bit of perspective, 
if we have a seismic event on the planet, those only last for a few moments in time. When the Apollo astronauts were doing the seismic activity, they created seismic waves on the surface. And the idea is to measure the amount of time that those waves take to travel from the surface into the core and come back to the surface. On Earth, seismic waves typically take maybe two minutes. When, when there's an impact, the term is it will ring, and it will ring for maybe two minutes, and, and then the ringing stops. On the moon, famously, the astronauts said that it was ringing like a bell, meaning that the ring continued long beyond that two minutes, typically around 10 minutes, and in some cases it lasted for hours. That is only possible if those seismic waves are moving through material as well as empty space or some space that is less dense that allows the propagation of those waves. If the material is more dense, it will soak up those waves. So this is one of the reasons it is what is called the ringing of the moon that leads to speculation that the moon may not be solid. When we talk about hollow, I don't know if it means that it is, is hollow like a, a sphere that is empty inside, but very possibly beneath the surface, deeply filled with caverns, or possibly large spaces that are open and then other spaces that become gradually more dense. Studies from NASA and also from other space agencies have also shown that there, there seems to be uh, gravitational anomalies on the moon. In, in other words, the density of the moon may not be consistent. And so uh, potentially you could theorize that a reason for this might be that there are cavities in the moon. It may not be entirely solid. As the discoveries during the space race surfaced, writers began weaving alternative scientific theories with fictional tales, cementing the mystery of the moon into popular culture. Four years after the Apollo 12 mission, British rock band Pink Floyd released their eighth studio album, The Dark Side of the Moon. This iconic album title influenced millions to question, why do we never see the dark side of the moon. One of the, the ironies that we see is what is called the tidal lock, T-I-D-A-L lock. And what this means is that the rotation of the moon exactly equals one orbit around the Earth, which leads us to only see one view of the moon, no matter where we are on Earth. We will never see what is called the dark side of the moon, because that rotation as it's moving is exactly locked into the rotation of our planet. It looks to us like the moon is not moving. No other moon in our solar system has such a rotation. The moon's total mass and its assumed volume and its assumed mass and density are such that it should have settled out to this form of a sphere. The problem is, is that a sphere would have a single center of mass, a single moment of inertia, which means that it would be free to rotate on any axis. But that's not what's happening because the moon's rotation on its axis is completely and precisely locked in to its period of orbit around the Earth. Now, what does that imply? It implies that the mass of the moon is not distributed radially symmetrical about its center of mass. Right there, that's a huge anomaly because the moon should have settled out to a spherical shape and then there would be no coupling between the moon's rotation and its orbit. But there is this coupling, what's called a one-to-one -one spin orbit coupling. So that in itself is anomalous. Why has the moon not done it? Well, it implies that something within the lunar crust is extremely rigid. When the Apollo astronauts began exploring the surface geologically, even they were surprised at the results 
of some of the tests that they found. One of the most mysterious factors is the moon obviously has many craters around it of different sizes, presumably from different impacts from objects of different sizes. And you would expect those impacts to go to varying depths because of the velocity of the impact. What the astronauts found is yes, the craters vary in diameter, but they all go to about the same depth as if they are hitting some kind of a mysterious boundary that will not allow them to go any deeper. You can look up the face of the moon and you see these gray splotches on the moon. Those are called the maria. The maria are like, sort of like lava plains, right? They're basaltic rock. They're circular, more or less. Some of them are very circular, almost certainly caused by impacts. Well, when you have a crater that's, say, 200 miles wide, it should be 20 miles deep. But on the moon, once you get to about a three mile depth, they continue to get wider, but they don't get any deeper. It's almost like you're trying to throw something against like a tank or something. It's so hard and so resistant that craters are not excavated to 20 miles deep. So you've got this extremely rigid crust, which is inexplicable. This is really only the beginning. I mean, then there's the mass concentrations that were discovered when the lunar orbiters back in the early 70s were going around the moon, passing over the great Maria. They would pass over the center, and as they're going along, all of a sudden they dip in their orbit because there was some tremendous gravitational pull that literally caused them to deflect downward. It followed that whatever was causing this extreme gravitational pull had to be near the surface. So what kind of an object could do that? Well, they came up with a hypothetical object that would be like a piece of cast iron, like 100 miles in diameter. So in other words, again, it's more evidence that the crust of the moon is extremely strong and extremely rigid. What are these mass cons? Nobody knows.